Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as P.D. Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone, one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! Uh, I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina. Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy. What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza. I beg your pardon. You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes, so they're free. So odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun. I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. <sighs> All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a trois with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless. And then he discovered the wager. At first, it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon, that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Suey, 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 Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I'd go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right, I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeeby's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother. You little squirt! Okay. 
Thanks, Gina. That was really... Two bucks. What? Two bucks! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good. We can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Shua, shua. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. Hey, oh. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only man who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? You sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%, but this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see you at ten and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink. Raise 500 and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500 and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody oh, hell! Shwa, shwa. Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck, 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 buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, moo. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, special agent. I... I... I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No, not horse. What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll just walk him out from here. Hey, Cheech! I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's gotta let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No, because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's gonna watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. But what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris! No, not Parisian. Persian! Iranian from Iran? Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about! That's racist! You take that back! Racism is ugly! And I'm pretty! Mom! Petey said we're racist! 
And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash, there's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail. You owe me 50 Gs from gambling. Want to take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <coughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? at the newsstand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. Jeez. I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine. I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banter? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum.
Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest, and the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. And eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. You try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi, you must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is, yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. So, Rita. Tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said- My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> Your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Petey, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it, a race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by the 
way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you when you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with Cheech for the rest of your life. <gasps> Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Don't kiss, please don't kiss. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <clears throat> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. And this guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? Thank God! Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone! <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new Smarty Pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! <laughs> Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc. This guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry. I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> Crap, I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad! Son of a... 
Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you, if you're gonna stay late, don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. My pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez, sorry! I thought you were someone else! Maybe uh, I should start wearing a bell? I wish you'd have thought of that earlier. It's that guy again. What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in a room getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw a money bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's gonna abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing. Nothing. Me. I need a gun. Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can't... Wait a second. McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't get time to explain. I think we've been made. <laughs> Whoa! Easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kind of cold. What do you feds want from me now? The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name not so? Nice uniform not so. <laughs> So what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir, are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! <gasps> Jimmy, what's a gabagool? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, Chick Magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. <laughs> For Canada! And... Ow! My stitches popped. Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. You hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on. Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the Chick Magnet's giving you a six-bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? 
I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well then, I suppose this is... goodbye? Really? I never hugged a cop before. Unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it. Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> Doing? I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on, but first we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details! I don't know, ask Petey! I can! He'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed! Wait, it had an eye missing! Good, good! So we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me! Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Uh, don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcones. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Call McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? <laughs> Agent McCool's special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking Dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? Try morphine. This sh is awesome. This isn't Chick Magnet. It's Petey. Petey? Hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home. We called them my uncles. No, uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! <laughs> what am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See? A truck full of lambs. <laughs> oh, right. Good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no. There's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy, with my little eye, two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that. Hey, Cheech? Cheech. Aw, he fell asleep. <laughs> Mummy, you don't have to turn on the red light. <gasps> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. Thundering Thunder Bay, Jimmy. <whistles> 
up like the wind horse, Jimmy's in trouble. For Canada, where friendship trumps infection every time. Okay, now we run him through the dryer a bunch of times to make him look old. I can't do this. I can lie to you and Pop, but Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now. If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Three more Kims and we'll be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm going to do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go. It's for the best. For us, at least. It's a double cross. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. <laughs> Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! Oh! oh. We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying, rum? Rum! Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around! This guy needs help! Oh, God, could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron! But what about Calif- Oh! You trying to kill us? You're a fed. I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them. <laughs> ah, my eyes! Ah! Do you ever wash your feet? <clears throat> hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback too? Between you and me. My nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know. I'm cold, too. Oh, I mean all the time. We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old barn? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Whose head is Ma gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right, now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <gasps> how? The hard way. <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Ah, the tag was chafing me. You threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because I keep money in him, that's why. I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble. <laughs> now, let's have a little talk about how I'm going to get my money back. 
one you want. It's Ma. She dragged me into this. Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? You didn't say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I going to incriminate myself? Oh, that's great. I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more. We gotta fight back. Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Ah, uh, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time till help comes. Give me that. Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, Chick Magnet, get him up. Get him up? You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? No, oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up. I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool! You're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, Donkey Dong. <laughs> ah! Horse! Good boy! Give him hell, horsey! Stop it, horse! You're only stomping lifeless pulp! Up on, boys! No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism! What do you want from me? I got a craving. Petey told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny, same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears that Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! This! Mm -hmm. Well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. How you doing? You know, back in the old days you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone fought it. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. Mm. Mm. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? Mm. 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 What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise. I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. <coughs> what language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. <coughs> ah, 
so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Barkeep, fix me three prancing Mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Jimmy! <laughs> oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy? How much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy sh balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> Oh, lovely. That's probably work, wondering where I am. So don't answer it. This is my work phone. I have to. No, you don't. <laughs> Special agent, straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat fuck not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how'd you know? <laughs> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Oh, 
only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% markup is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 G's for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, oh. McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo. Open the door. Tutty got shot in the ass. Again. Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, yo. Where's the regular Doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's, uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your sort and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so hair don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now nah, he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tutti. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? 
Mar on. Look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick, pick, me, me. pick me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of yous. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? You're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find this get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, oh, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these moves? I bet you forgot our anniversary! Didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure, I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh! Smells like New York back here! Oh! So you're the one who was smoking, Teresa! You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle dick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah, the guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey! I knew it! Going to Harvard, bye! Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York! Somebody give him some hay or something! <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus, H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this. I think we can totally do this. Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this! <laughs> 
It's a beautiful morning at Belmont. The sun is shining. The horses are ready. And the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took a speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets. And in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama! I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Whoa, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silva, keep still. Leo, you gotta see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So this is just a horse dancing. For three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals. How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle, my brother, Polly, the brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out of town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. Ah, 
All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Fuck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! We're live! <laughs> 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 <laughs>